On the face of it there is nothing funny about a man getting kicked in the head. On the face of it is also, by chance, where Patrice Evra appeared to kick his victim before Thursday's big face match between Vittoria and Marseille and Guimaraes. Happily, however, the kicky was not seriously harmed. But this is a confusing story, in that it is inherently deeply troubling and disappointing, telling us nothing good about the fan involved, the player involved, the state of football or the direction of humanity in general, yet it also involved a player being sent off before a game, which is inherently hilarious. It is the footballing equivalent of a Frankie Boyle stand-up routine, in that while shedding tears of laughter you realize you should probably instead be weeping about the twisted thought processes that led to it happening in the first place. UEFA has already opened disciplinary proceedings against Marseille whose fans spent half an hour abusing their own players as they warmed up, and invaded the pitch. Vittoria whose reaction to the pitch being invaded by abusive fans was too weak and Evra whose reaction to the pitch being invaded by abusive fans has already been mentioned. The player can expect a lengthy ban, but can't expect to get away with a slap on the wrist. If UEFA can stamp out this kind of thing they'll be as pleased as punch. But how did it come to this? Sadly we already know that Evra has been called some horrible things in the past, without previously being provoked to egregious public violence. His manager, Rudy Garcia, said that on this occasion there had been insults so low and so incredible, which according to L'Equipe included the laughably innocent get out of Marseille, your bad and the apparently insta-space related go back to your videos. In Everest's notably chirpy and wildlife-friendly feed, the footballer can be seen kissing a dolphin, feeding a lion, petting a pig, cradling a crocodile, conversing with a camel, posing with a panda, caressing a koala and also hugging Denzel Washington. In this regard as well as the obvious one, what happened recalls Air Cantona's infamous kung fu kick at Crystal Palace in 1995 which, according to the victim, was provoked by nothing more sinister than a cry of off you go, it's an early shower for you other witnesses described the repeated use of a popular word beginning with F and another that rhymes with banker. Like football matches themselves, these incidents always have two sides when Liverpool's El Haji Duf appeared in court in 2003 charged with gobbing at a Queen's Celtic fan. The prosecution alleged that before it happened the player, having run into an advertising hurting, had been given a pat on the head by the spectator in what was a jovial move. Duf reported that, in his native Senegal being touched on the head is insulting, degrading and patronizing and associated with the time when slaves were counted by being hit on the head. This is, in every sense, murky stuff. A professional player must maintain self-control despite provocations and insults, no matter how unjustified they may be, read Marseille's statement. This is no way for supporters to carry on, and we should all want this kind of behavior to be knocked on the head. Just not like that. Quote of the day I heard the first whistle go just as I was shooting. If I had heard it before I wouldn't have kicked the ball. It's something that's never happened to me before. We tried to tell the ref afterwards it was a goal, but he said it WASNT and blew for the end of the match and WASNT going to do anything to change it. Pon Faradine as Andy Rodriguez tries to get his head round how the referee could be so cruel as to blow the full-time whistle as he dinked the ball over Gymnastica's keeper to seal what he thought was a last minute and much-needed 10 win in Segunda Bielas. Recommended listening Here's the latest Football Weekly Extra. Support The Guardian producing The Guardian's thoughtful, in-depth journalism, the stuff not normally found in this email, obviously, is expensive, but supporting us ISNT. If you value our journalism, please support us by making a one-off or recurring contribution. Fiverr Letters Detroit City Football Club DCFC was started in 2012 as a more or less grassroots semi-pro club. The team plays in the fourth-tier NPSL. During the first three years they played at a local high school field Castec, which held 3,500. The club routinely would sell out. So, three years ago they moved to the much larger Keyworth Stadium. However, that ground was in really bad shape so the club managed to raise over $700,000 to refurbish. Plus, the fans took a page out of the Union Berlin playbook and pitched in with their own labor to help rebuild the stadium. DCFC routinely sees attendances over 5,000 a game. Our largest to date was over 7,500 during a playoff game. As you can see, DCFC is doing quite well. Now comes MLS. 
They have been trying to use this excess of DCFC to promote their own bid to bring MLS soccer ball to Detroit. First, they tried to trademark the name Detroit City Soccer Club or DCSC. Fortunately, the trademark office refused that name. Now, just yesterday the group making the MLS bid created stadium renderings that contained DCFC scarves and supporter flags. I encourage you to read Tom Adi's. Seeing as Real Madrid, Chelsea and inevitably Arsenal after this weekend are in crisis, I think it's high time for a boffin to construct some kind of crisis measuring machine in order to give a definitive answer for what constitutes a crisis. You could calibrate it by picking the crisis outliers i.e. Sunderland, nasty leads in their inglorious post-goldfish years then simply enter your club's current form and it'll pump out a reading from the crisis scale for which I'd propose stable, a bit wobbly, blip, worrying, end of days. With a scientifically proven answer to the crisis question in place, this may overnight render the shouty people of social media surplus to requirement and free to lead more rewarding lives taking up painting watercolors or constructing haikus about Tony Pulis headgear, and the world would be a better place as a result, Matt Lou. Many of us regular Fiverr readers will know that the Fiverr has long operated a comprehensive hierarchy of hurt with regards to degrees of neck. However, because I have no other life, I have noticed what I'm calling a taxonomy of talk, where proper football people have variously whispered, sighed, wibbled, parped, tooted, honked, cheered, whooped, bawled, and roared, right up to the uppermost of all utterances, blutered, blathers Tony Crawford. With rumors abound that Nuno Espirito Santo is being touted for the Everton job yesterday's Fiverr letters, one must consider if there's a big club termination provision in his Wolves contract. A Santa Claus, if you will, Daniel Duty. Send your letters to the dot boss at theguardian.com. And if you've nothing better to do you can also tweet the Fiverr. Today's winner of our letter off day is Matt Lou, who wins a copy of the excellent new David Squires book The Illustrated History of Football Hall of Fame. We've more to give away, so keep typing. Vote 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 big paper, football weekly, David Squires and Jonathan Wilson are all up for gongs at the upcoming FSF Awards and you can vote for them here, should you wish. Notifications and Queries Big Web App has launched its new and improved Premier League notifications. Get more details and sign up here. Bits and Bobs Jose Mourinho reckons he has settled his Spanish tax snack case by waltzing into court like the big man and parting with 3.3 million euros as though he was paying a parking ticket. I didn't argue, I paid, and everything is definitively closed, he said, without demanding praise for his unusually dynamic tactics. A court spokesman disputes this, mind, stating the Manchester United manager remains under official investigation and adding that he had answered questions only from his lawyer and did not take questions from public prosecutors. Bit of a scrum, like. Photograph CIPIEPA Santi Cazorla has spoken of the gruesome extent of his long layoff, revealing how knack in 2013 almost led to his leg being amputated. The doctor saw I had a tremendous infection, that I had damaged part of the calcaneus bone and it had eaten the Achilles tendon, said Cazorla. There was eight centimeters of it missing. The fivers you did driving, shrimp throwing, didgeridoo blowing, yabby creek dwelling Australian cousin, Yahoo Fiver is gutted after hearing news that Flamin' Anklega may have done for Tim Cahill's chances of playing in the upcoming World Cup playoff with Honduras. It's FA Cup first round weekend non-league Woking will have to up their game 10 times to beat League One Barry, according to striker INIHFing. It'll be 100% ready and fire myself up for it, he punned if they're the 5th of November meeting. But it will be very tough. It's Barry. Caretaker Dave reckons a return to Goodison Park, with its positive vibe of late, is just what Everton need after a run of six soul-shattering defeats on the spin. I can't wait to stand there in front of 40,000 Evertonians, who I know will get behind everybody on Sunday, he honked, ahead of the 21 defeat to Watford. Despite playing in Liverpool's defence, Alberto Moreno has been recalled to the Spain squad. He is playing like an undroppable starter at Liverpool, parped Spain boss Julian Lopetegui. And just sneaking into ruin our Friday comes hot talk of a UA fold Global Nations League, aiming to stage a worldwide football tournament every odd-numbered year new make it stop. The recap sign up and receive the best of big websites coverage, every Friday, it says here.
Seems to be a curious lack of mentions for the fiver. Still want more? Oh look, it's new booze column 10 talking pint. Oh, it was just a dream. Nearly. Composite John Super for the Guardian Glenn Kirk FPGT images Jason Karen the faction images via Reuters Darren Staples Reuters being the second youngest of eight has helped Watford's Abdullah Dokore tells Paul Doyle. Nick Miller gets his natter on with Sheffield United boss Chris Wilder, a boyhood Blades fan with his sights set on the Premier League. Ben Fisher talks to the FA Cup first round dreamers, from Truro City to Shalane. Lincoln City manager Danny Cowley speaks to David Richardson about last year's record-breaking FA Cup run, as well as being Bado Spartak U10 girls' assistant. Brighton defender and resident columnist Liam Rosinia raises a glass to Marcelo Bielsa and El Loco's influence on English football's recent rise. There isnt much to be positive about for caretaker Dave and Everton after their big vase exit, writes Mark Tolentire. Oh, and if it's your thing, you can follow Big Website on Big Social Face Space. And Insta Chat 2 back once again.